Hi, welcome back to my channel and another video today. I'm going to be giving you my top 10 favourite horror movies we've had from Blumhouse. Now, this is quite an interesting production company because they are almost renowned now for giving us such hit or miss releases. You know, in my opinion, some of the best horror movies we've had in the past 10 to 20 years have come from Blumhouse, but... Let's be honest, they release a lot of garbage as well. You just never really know what you're going to get with them. And obviously there's been a lot of negativity recently with some of their releases, stuff like Night Swim, and more recently with Imaginary. So today I thought I'd take the time to make you all a video telling you about all my highest recommendations from the horror films we've had from Blumhouse. This list as well is only going to be compiled of movies that I consider to come under the genre of horror. You know, if this was talking about all of Blumhouse releases, you'd have stuff in here like Upgrade, which was a really fantastic sci-fi thriller they did a few years ago, but I wanted to keep this list strictly to horror. So with all that stuff out of the way, let's get into this list. So my number 10 choice is going to be The Visit. And this is an M. Night Shyamalan film from around 10 years ago now. And this is considered by most to be somewhat of a comeback for him. He had a real slump through the 2000s, releasing a lot of terrible movies. So to see him coming back to doing this much smaller scale horror film, uh, you know, with a small cast, found footage, I thought was a really good idea. And I think the film really does work, especially as a horror movie. You know, it's basically the story here is about these two siblings who are going to stay with their grandparents for the week and they want to film it to have it as a small documentary as a memory for them and as the week goes on they realize these grandparents are quite strange quite unusual people and everything starts to get more and more weird and creepy as the week goes on and as I say from a horror film perspective I think it really works well there's a lot of really scary sequences uh, one in particular where the kids are playing games underneath the house, uh, where they're crawling around under the space there. That was a really memorable scene and it really does get under your skin. So a lot of good scary moments throughout. And even though it was a little bit predictable, I did quite like the twist ending. I think it works well, even though I think most people who have seen a lot of M. Night's movies will see that coming. The only thing that brings it back a little bit for me is that M. Night, it feels like he decided to force this into being a comedy horror. You know, I don't I don't really think his humour particularly works in most of his movies. A lot of it comes off a little bit cringy and awkward, I feel. And there's moments here where it really feels like he's forcing it. And I, I'm kind of laughing at the fact he decided to put certain moments here in the movie uh, rather than actually finding any of it funny. I think he should have kept this to being strictly a horror movie and it would have worked a little bit better but still for the most part I think it's a good horror film it's got some good moments and it's definitely one of the better M. Night films. My number nine choice is going to be Unfriended Dark Web and this one was a real surprise for me it is a sequel to that original Unfriended film it's an unrelated story uh, but that original I found to be a little bit, it was okay, but it was a generic paranormal story. But I enjoyed it enough because I do love this style of filmmaking where everything is told through the computer screen. Uh, you know, think if you've ever seen Searching or Missing, anything like that. It's done in this style. Uh, but they really stepped up the game here with this Unfriended sequel. It's got a much more intriguing story uh, that's really grounded in reality and told from a really interesting horror film perspective and so this story is about this group of friends who end up finding a macbook in a cafe that's been abandoned and whilst they're skyping one evening the guy that takes home this macbook he ends up finding all this really disturbing content on their snuff films and things like that and he ends up getting contacted by the owner giving him threats in order to try and get this laptop back and, and through this, all of this group of friends end up being roped into this really horrific and nightmarish situation. And the thing I love about this film is it really does tap into all of those fears around the dark side of the internet. You know, the dark web, as said in the title, and talking about snuff movies and the kind of disgusting and disturbing content that some people are willing to pay for for entertainment online. Uh, it's really quite disturbing. 
Obviously, this stuff does go on in real life. And to see these kind of, you know, this innocent group of, you know, teens, 20s kind of get roped into this situation where they're now involved within it. It takes a lot of really dark and scary directions. And it's quite it's quite an effective film in the way it's done. I thought it was really, really uh, well told, this story. And... Yeah, it's got a lot of horrific moments in it, and I really, I've, I've, the one moment that's really stuck with me is that final scene when you get the kind of final reveal of what's going on and how this has all been playing out. Uh, it will definitely stick with you. So quite a surprise this one. If you saw Unfriended and weren't really a fan of it, definitely give this one a go. It's quite a different film and definitely worth checking out. Number eight is going to be Insidious, the James Wan film. And I actually really like this horror movie. I do think maybe now for people watching this for the first time won't find it as good, but you know, we've had countless, you know, conjuring sequels with Annabelle, The Nun, and other movies of this sort like this that have come out ever since. So if you watch Insidious now, it doesn't feel as fresh. But at the time, I remember finding this really quite exciting and a really, you know, fresh take on the sort of paranormal uh, ghost story. And I think a lot of things about it still work. I watched it again last year leading up to the new Insidious film and, you know, you've got a great character dynamic here with this family, very watchable actors like Patrick Wilson and Rose Byrne. I just always love watching these type of actors in movies. And there's a lot of really effective horror sequences as well. You know, one in particular where Patrick Wilson is in the dream, sort of that dream sequence where he comes down into the house and all the people are still there smiling at him. Uh, scenes like that really get under your skin if you watch them in the right atmosphere. And I love that weird design they have for that demon creature as well. That was pretty, pretty shocking to see at the time. So a lot of things about this movie still work. But again, you kind of do have to watch it within, you know, think of it in hindsight before we had countless amounts of these sort of paranormal ghost type movies. Uh, I don't think it's as good as The Conjuring, though. Watching it again, I still feel like James Wan definitely upped his game as The Conjuring. But as a horror film, I still think the first Insidious really works quite well. Number seven is The Black Phone from Scott Derrickson. This was actually the first movie I ever reviewed on this channel, funny enough. And I really liked this movie. It had a lot of that style of it about it, which I really liked. I always like to see Ethan Hawke in movies, and I think he had a great performance here as, you know, the, the masked villain. And yeah, it's kind of a story. It's, it's dealing with quite a lot of dark themes here, as a lot of those sort of Stephen King inspired stories do. Or I believe it's his son, actually, that wrote the story for this. But, you know, a lot of those stories deal with kind of trauma uh, and things of that nature. And I think it's done in a really effective way here. But it's just a very tense movie with a nice atmosphere. Great child actors as well that really kind of bring this story to life. So I think if you enjoy movies like It, uh, you'll really enjoy The Black Phone. I've been meaning to give this one a revisit as I haven't seen it since cinema, but it was one of the better horror films I think we had back in 2022. Number six for me is going to be Paranormal Activity. Now, I don't know if I'm running off complete nostalgia with this one, but I can't take away from that experience I first had in the cinema watching this at only about 15 or 16, I believe, when this was released. And I thought it was absolutely terrifying. Again, it's another found footage movie, and I just think it was really quite effective in the way it was done with that extremely low budget. You know, obviously, movies like The Blair Witch Project kind of paid the way for being able to do low budget filmmaking with found footage and still make it really effective and I think Paranormal did that again. Uh, I, I like the kind of couple and following this nightmarish situation but I think just most of all there are some really good scares here and I have to say I haven't watched this again in a long time now so I wonder whether it would still hold up today given how much horror, how many horror movies I've seen now and the fact that I'm a little bit older but at the time experiencing this a lot of it really got to me like scenes in particular like where the, the girl she gets up out of the bed and they look back on the footage because obviously they're recording their situation uh, to kind of find out what's been happening with these sort of paranormal events and she's looking over him in the bed and she's been standing there for like three or four hours just little effective moments like that just really creative uh, that really find ways to get under your skin so yeah, a lot of really freaky moments in this. I am kind of intrigued to maybe watch this again now to see how I feel about it. But again, going off that first experience,
experience seeing it in the cinema. Uh, it's one of the, the movies that really, you know, is, is kind of I credit to making me such a horror fan. Going to a movie like that and just watching a cinema packed with people that are hiding behind their, <laughs> their jumpers and their popcorn, uh, it's very exciting and it's why I love horror so much. So I have to give credit to Paranormal Activity for that. Number five is going to be Halloween 2018. And this movie, I still really enjoy it. I think it's a movie that kind of has a special place in my heart just because of how much excitement there was around this film at the time of its release. You know, it had a huge box office. People were obviously hungry again for bringing back these old horror movies to the big screen once again so many years later. Seeing the return of Jamie Lee Curtis and everything, it was, it was quite exciting going out to see this. And... I really do still quite like the movie. I do think it has a lot of problems, but for the most part, I still really enjoy it, and I do regularly re-watch it. Uh, I love some of the characters they brought in here, like Andy Matichek, the granddaughter. I think she was really good. And I like seeing J.B. Lee Curtis back again, although I do think that they did her character better and stuff like h 2 It maybe got a little bit over the top here, I thought. But for the most part, this is still a very effective horror movie. I think the guy that plays Michael Myers is really effective. There's some great tense sequences, a lot of good, very gnarly kills here. And overall, it is a quite a rewatchable movie. And this is really the only one of these, this new Halloween trilogy that I go back to now. I think, you know, what where the, the direction they kind of went in with kills and with ends, even I thought ends was okay, but oh, there's something about the direction this went in. I, I kind of wish now they'd gone the generic route and just stuck to what they did in 18, just make two more of them, continue on that story and wrap it up nicely. For some reason, the weird direction they went with this trilogy has kind of sat worse with me the more and more I've thought about it. But for this first movie of the three, I think it's still a very good horror movie and definitely one of the best Halloween sequels we've ever had. My number four is going to be Creep from 2014, and this is not that crappy British film uh, that takes place in the underground stations. This is a much lower budget found footage movie. I didn't realise I was such a big found footage fan until making this list, really. It just so happens, I guess, that Blumhouse seemed to have released the best of them. Uh, but this is a really effective one. This was made by a guy called Mark Duplass. And he's made a few small budget films like this that are really interesting. And the story here is basically about this videographer who is struggling for work. And he's going out to meet a guy who's paying him who has this inoperable brain tumour. And he wants to kind of film a day in his life to give to his family that he no longer sees as a memory uh, for the unborn son uh, to kind of give him some happy memories and not just of him sort of dying as he goes out with this illness. And yeah, as the day goes on, this guy's kind of very strange behaviour starts to get more and more unusual and peculiar as the day goes on. And the guy starts to become very unsettled by it. And yeah, you know it's going in a very bad direction and things by the end get very wild. And I don't want to spoil anything else about this movie because it's one where you have to really go along on the journey with these with this character because it there's some there's like small very subtle details about it that make it very scary. There's a particular scene involving a Halloween mask in the middle which wow, it, it's it's one of, it really will send a chill up your spine. It's very scary. Uh, and it's, uh, it's really effectively done. So it's like the small things in this movie, this guy really knows how to tap into the, the things that make us uncomfortable and scared about unpredictable and unusual people. So it's a film that really kind of taps into that fear. Uh, and it's really nicely done, a great, very memorable ending as well. So if you've never heard of this one before, definitely check it out. I think it's, it's definitely on UK Netflix, but wherever you are, uh, I'm sure it'll be somewhere on a streaming service, definitely worth watching. Number three is going to be a movie called The Gift from 2015. And this is one that probably comes on that line between being a horror film and more of a psychological thriller. But I did decide to include it in this list because there are some you know, pretty unsettling and creepy sequences in here. And I do often feel like it's more of a horror film. But this is another really interesting one with a very small cast uh, in an isolated situation where you've got this couple who have bought a new house together. They've obviously had some issues in the past and they're, they're moving in to kind of start a new life. And one day out of nowhere, one of the guy's old schoolmates from 20 years ago turns up 
and you know kind of wants to get involved back in their lives and start talking to them, meeting with them and kind of forming a friendship and connection again and you know this guy is one of those kind of people where you feel a little bit sorry for them where they do have kind of a social anxiousness about them they're a little bit awkward a little bit unusual uh, but there's something quite likable about them as well so this couple kind of because they feel sorry for him decide to start inviting him into their lives uh, and getting more and more involved with them and then as things go through again like i said with creep kind of another similar premise where this guy, weirder and weirder stuff starts to happen, unusual behaviours that, so, that sort of send it down in a very dark direction. And something I liked about this movie, though, that is different from the previous, is it does kind of deal with a lot of those themes of morality where by the end of the film, when you've had various reveals about how these characters know each other and their history, you don't really entirely know how to feel about them. And it kind of does bring a lot of those questions uh, to the viewer that it doesn't really answer for you, where it leaves you thinking, you know, who really is the bad person in this film? Who's seeing this from the, the wrong and the right perspective? And I just thought all of that discussion and that portrayal of that here was just done really effectively. I also love that it's starring Jason Bateman in a more serious, role I think he really works as a serious actor I I, I would never really I, I like him as a comedian as well but I just found him way more intriguing here to see him playing a much more serious role I couldn't believe how well he played it and yeah he makes for this really interesting character and sort of see, seeing him trying to deal with this horrible situation unfold where he's obviously covering things up as well but he's also doing it for the right reason so uh, it's a film that really will make you think and it's got a lot of really effective moments in it as well it's a highly recommended one if you've never seen this before. Number two is The Invisible Man from Leigh Whannell in 2020 and I did actually just recently talk about this movie I put this as my number one best horror movie we've had of the 2020s so far and it's a movie that the more and more I've watched it the more I've liked it I think it tackles its themes in a really interesting way it is a remake uh, of an older movie but it's you know about a woman escaping domestic abuse and it's basically talking about the themes of how even once you've escaped a situation, how the horrors of that can still cause a lot of havoc in your relationships in the rest of your life, where paranoia plays into it, anxiety and, and other things like that. Uh, just here it's told from the perspective where some of those fears actually do come into reality. And yeah, I just think it's dealt with in a really interesting and very effective way. And as a horror movie as well, some great scenes here. One particular uh, quite shocking scene that occurs in the attic. Uh, one of the best jump scares we've had in, in, a, in a horror movie, I think, that... Wow, that really got me seeing that for the first time. I literally jumped out of my skin. And I kind of like the little sci-fi elements in there as well. I don't want to say too much just to not spoil anything if you, if you haven't seen it before. Uh, but I really like the direction it goes in as well and uh, gives you a lot of food for thought afterwards. So dealing with a lot of things and uh, again, you know, great performances here by Elizabeth Moss in the lead. Uh, I thought she was really great at kind of playing this very troubled character and kind of having to deal with, you know, everything going wrong in her life and having to go to the edge to regain herself. Sanity. So, extremely well done movie. I'm, I'm so looking forward to seeing what Leigh Whannell does next because it's just hit after hit with him. He's done so many good movies now. I'm really interested to see what he brings us next. My number one choice, though, is going to be Get Out. And this could probably be predictable for some people. I'm sure a lot of you as well, if you look over Blumhouse's releases, this will also be your number one. And I was very much on the hype train for this one. I was very excited to see it, uh, given what I'd heard about it. And this was at a time as well where I wasn't as into movies as I am now. I kind of have phases in life where I come in and out of movies. And I'd heard a bit of buzz about this film and went to see it. And I was just absolutely blown away by it. I went to see it a couple of times at the cinema. I've watched it a ton of times since. And I just think it, it's just a fantastic horror film. The fact as well that it came from first-time director Jordan Peele uh, uh, just makes it even better. And it's made me excited for everything that he brings afterwards. It, it's a shame, really, that the movies he's done since I don't think have lived up to Get Out. But that's just because he set the bar so high, I think. 
and this movie just has an incredible atmosphere the entire way through it's full of surprises and twists you'll never guess where it's going i think the horror scenes are handled in an incredible way uh, so it's some of it's really quite trippy as well it takes you to another place and really immerses you in this completely wild situation and Something I love about it as well is the way it handles the social commentary. It goes in directions that are very effective, but they're also quite surprising as well. And I think it does it better than a lot of movies we've had recently that do that. You know, movies often, I think, that are dealing with social commentary or political messaging, social messaging, stuff like that. I don't mind that being in films, but I like it to be done in a subtle and effective way, rather than it just feeling like you're being beaten over the head by something. And, and having having the filmmaker basically just preach messaging at you and and get out basically does have a message it has a lot of commentary about race but it does it in a very effective way and a unique way as well and that's something that i just love about this movie it really is endlessly rewatchable i love daniel kaluuya in the lead and i honestly think this is genuinely one of the best horror movies we've had released in the 21st century so even though get out is the best of jordan peele's work i'm still very excited to see what he's going to bring us next so that is my top 10 list for my favorite horror movies we've had from blumhouse as always please do come and join me down in the comments section and let me know all of your picks for your favorite blumhouse horror movies again my list is just purely my opinion these are the movies that i love the most that i go back to read watch the most and i'm sure you'll have a very different list to me but do leave all of your thoughts on your favorites down below i think the only movie that i haven't seen that may have made this list is oculus because i love mike flanagan but for whatever reason i've just never got around to seeing that but that's probably the only movie that may have made this list that i haven't yet seen so do let me know about that down as well below if you've seen oculus as well please do consider subscribing to my channel if you've been enjoying my content got a lot more exciting stuff coming for you soon thanks so much for watching this video and i'll see you next time